mean, I'm notorious for wanting to get back in places. In Okeechobee, in pre-practice this year, it's all about finding open areas that are further back in. So you're gonna like literally, and I'm not kidding about this, you're running through, you know, straight reads. Like I'll run until I overheat. Like I'm just gonna run, 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 run. And all of a sudden, boom, it'll open up. I get in this boat lane and there's boat lanes in Okeechobee, but they're only two foot deep, but most of it's normally muck or some sort of mud and silt. So you get your jack plate up and you get up on planes two and a half foot deep. I remember sitting there and it's like, I get up there and I put all my jack plate all the way up, trim my motor to where I can probably get up on plane. I, I get going and boom, all three blades on my prop were bent over and I couldn't get in. I was like 30 minutes late. But I, was, I mean, it was, it's still one of those things, always having a spare prop. I couldn't get out because over the they don't have any banks, so you couldn't get out and you're trying to get out there and mess around and just, it was a bad deal. The origination of the Lee Series, I was so fired up. Denny Brower standing next to me, Tommy Biffle, all these guys, all my heroes for my whole life. And I actually launched my boat, first Elite Series day. They called my number for checkoff and right then, I looked at the deck of my boat and I realized all my rods were in my hotel room 10 miles away. So that wasn't a good start to my first tournament. I'm an idiot. The Ranger fuel tanks in 2012, you had to switch a valve to switch over tanks. And I was running down the lake and uh, I ran out of gas on one of the tanks and I thought I had broken down. I called the tournament director, Bill Taylor, and, and uh, you know, I said, I'm, I broke down, Bill, can you send somebody out? And, they were about to send somebody out, and my calling was like, did you switch tanks at all? And he started pumping the ball, I fired right back up, and we're on our way. But, you know, as a rookie, it was kind of an embarrassing thing, especially when your calling tells you, hey, man, I think you ran out of gas, so. No, no. It just, I, I'm not home enough to have any pets. You know, I, I like dogs, but I like other people's dogs. <laughs> I do not snuggle with my dog, no. Those, those pictures on Facebook are definitely safe pictures. Yes, no, I try to leave the dog outside as much as I can. Is the dog sleeping in the bed? No, no, he's not allowed to, dog is not allowed to sleep in the bed at all. I have one pet, and it's a Great Dane. Her name is Stella. She's huge. She weighs about 115 pounds. Had her for nine years. She is an awesome dog. Stella does not sleep in our bed. In fact, she got banished to the other room. She used to sleep in the room with us in her bed, but she dreams so much at night that she kicks and barks and yells. We had to put her in the other room because she kept us awake all night. Lily, our little Havanese dog, it pretty much takes over our household whenever, uh, whenever she's around, and she's always around. So she sleeps with us. She has full run of the house. She takes over furniture. If she wants to chew on it, we just go buy new furniture. She, she has pretty much run of the Rose household. No, we don't let. I, I, I try every once in a while. I'm like, hey mom, hey mom. I need like these, these five shirts ironed. I'll pay you $10 to come over and do them. I swear to you, and she'll go over there and do it. She's like, all right, $10, put it on cash, money. I'm like, all right. I've done my laundry since I've been like 12 years old. I remember one time, like my mom used to do my brother's, mine and my dad's laundry. And I got so many, like my brother's socks, my dad's shirt. I'm like, hey, I'll take them out with my own hands. I'll do my own laundry. So I've done it ever since. Easy going guy. A lot of people think that, you know, because I don't walk around with a big old smile like some guys that, that I'm mean. And I'm not. I just I just march to the beat of a different drum, I guess. For a while there, I thought I was going to be a professional skier. And what do you know? I'm here at the Bass Western Classic, looking around and, and, and trying to make a living in bass fishing. I'm not a gym rat. I don't do anything like that. I'm an old guy. But I still do my setups. I do my push ups. And I use real light weights you know, to keep, keep my forearms built up, keep the tendons in my elbows built up. You know, I use three pound weights on my elbows and different stuff. And, and you know, just use common sense. I walk a lot. I can't run, my knees don't take it, but I do a lot of walking. Fishing is probably the biggest sport that takes up most of my time, but I do like to mountain bike as well. I like to spend some time working out, either inside the gym or outside the gym. Just basically trying to stay in shape for fishing season. It's, it's not very much. I'd almost be embarrassed to say. I think in my prime, I could like rep 225 for maybe six or eight times. I'd be lucky to get it up once, probably. People don't know that I'm a 
you know, originally from Canada and that I, you know, that I played hockey, you know. Uh, I didn't really get into competitive bass fishing until I was in, in college, you know. So a lot of people don't know that, but, uh, you know, I was a goalie in hockey too. People see a guy my size and they don't think I was a goalie, but, you know, growing up I was a lot smaller and leaner at the time. Well, in the off season, I'm a passionate crappie fisherman. I tell everybody that I bass fish only to make enough money to go crappie fishing. I don't bass fish at all in my off season. And if you ask, I was doing an event last night and a guy said, Mark, come by my place. I got like 12, 15 pound Florida strain bass. You can catch them like every cast. And I said, you got any crappie in there? I don't care anything about bass fishing whenever, it's kind of like you're a police officer and somebody asks you to go patrolling while you do have a little off time. You don't want to do that. So crappie fishing is my passion. Not only do you need to be fortunate and have some luck involved getting to this level, but everything has to go right in between that. So I would just say to find myself in the position that I'm in now, looking back on it, I would never believe I would ever have got here. But now that I am, I'm extremely grateful to be here and I wanna make sure everything I can do everything I can to stay here. You know, the best of the best are good at making decisions on the fly. And you have to trust your gut. And everyone talks about that a lot, but being able to fish to your own strength is a really good thing too. So actually looking for a bite, you wanna be versatile, but trying to figure out a couple of different bites that are going on that you know a little bit about, and when you figure it out, you know you know a lot about that, it's pretty important. So doing your own thing on tours is, is the biggest thing to help me. I'd probably be living in Idaho, just hanging out, hunting, fishing, just cruising, because it's a lot cheaper to live up there. <laughs>